Welcome to Hackbits, where we cover a variety of cybersecurity subjects. Join your host, Gaspar Martirano, as he interviews cybersecurity experts and discusses the latest cybersecurity news, trends, data breaches, and updates on state-sponsored cybercrime. Hello, welcome everyone to Hackbits. I'm uh, really excited to have uh, our next guest on today to talk uh, a little bit about uh, Cybrella, which is a, a company we'll be we're going to be speaking about, and also talking uh, a little bit about continuous integration and continuous delivery. So uh, I think it's a it's a pretty cool topic, and I'm really excited to hear thoughts. So Moshe, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, first of all, Jasper, f- great to be here, and thank you for hosting me. Um, excited for the opportunity. Um, so my name is Moshe. I've been in information security for the last 20 years. For the first 10 years, I've been working for the large enterprise. But after 10 years, I switched over and became an entrepreneur and work with um, with many startups. Um, I'm located in Israel, so many of the star- uh, so you know it's a very vibrant uh, startup scene here. Um, and something ha- really happened like 10 years ago or 12 years ago in the startup scene. We started developing on top of cloud services. In the beginning, it was uh, Amazon Web Services. Later, Azure and um, uh, Google kicked in. And I was really excited about the opportunities that the cloud brought to us, especially for young company. It was the first time that we were able to uh, develop on top of a real infrastructure, you know, not, not imagining that we have an infrastructure, but really develop, develop on something that has the capabilities of uh, uh, producing real DDoS protection or right. uh, give us uh, the automation options. And I was really excited about it. And for the last 10 years, I've been helping in promoting cloud, uh, and especially cloud security, creating research, uh, working with different communities, and especially with the Cloud Security Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization that is promoting best practices for cloud security. And I've been active with um, uh, with producing research and knowledge and been helping in promoting, in uh, creating some of the uh, certification in this area, either for the CSA or for ISACA and I, or for ISC Square, and talking to many organizations about cloud security and the opportunities and threats inside of it. Um, and also, I've been an uh, advisory board for Sabrella, which pr- promotes unique cyber services in the area of application security. And this is exactly our topic for the discussion today. Excellent. You know, I, and I, before we start, I always like to ask this question. I ask it of every guest. So you've been involved in, uh, you said, uh, for the past uh, 20 years. So where did your love for security and did you start at a young age tinkering around with uh, mm-hmm. with computers? Or just give me a little bit of, about the history or maybe you had an interest in something else and this mm-hmm. came on later on in life. Give me a little bit of the background there. Yeah, well, to be honest, uh, I, I can't say that I uh, I hacked my first computer when I was ten. To be uh, to be honest, I was a regular child. The in the again mentioned coming from Israel, the first uh, place I met computer was in the army, and uh, basically I was part of the intelligence unit. And uh, by the time I was eighteen, I managed a network. Of thousands of computer, one of the network, one of the largest computer network, uh, networks at the time, and this was basically my first encounter with computer and the high tech companies, uh, the high tech environment. Sorry, and when I graduated from the army, that was exactly the uh, the, the dot com uh, times in the right. beginning of the of the uh, in the beginning of the millennium. So it was the perfect time to join the high tech community, and uh, this is exactly where I started doing security because. Uh, at the time, there was uh, computers and uh, networks were only at the beginning, and, net- and information security was just starting to take shape. And this is exactly where I joined this wave. So, so tell me a little bit. What are some of the challenges that organizations are facing today, and and maybe tell me how how Sabrella helps in those challenges? Well, in Sabrella, we're focusing on application security, which I think. Uh, today we can say definitely that it's the most neglected space in information security. I mean, infrastructure security, endpoint security, data security, we've been practicing for many years. But I'm still surprised that many organizations, even large banks or even the coolest software companies still struggling with application security. I think this is the last frontier that we need to master. And... Um, the cloud brought with its uh, brought some changes to this application security 
thin. And in Cerebrella, we are trying to help customers basically first understand the challenges of developing on the cloud, second opportunities, and help them cre uh, create better and resilient software on top of cloud services. So, so tell me a little bit about, uh, explain what, what uh, continuous uh, integration and continuous delivery is. What exactly is CI and uh, CD? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're starting to dive in, but let's talk for a minute about the scenario. First of all, in Cerella, we have a lot of customers. Most of these customers are software companies, even though um, they could be from different sectors, but they are, even, they, if, even if they're coming from different sectors, not high-tech companies, but uh, they're coming from uh, fintech or a health environment, they're developing a lot of software. And currently in the last couple of years, this software move to the cloud. And when I say cloud, I mostly mean, let's frame this discussion into IaaS and PaaS, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. And if we want to further this more, most of the, most of the organization we see usually use one of the hyperscale provider, which is Amazon, Google, uh, Microsoft, Oracle, or IBM to develop, test, and launch their software. So this is the scenario that we are talking about. Now, the word cloud and every buzzword around it, like DevOps or microservices or CI CD, they all come into, they all have one goal, which is to develop faster, develop application that are more resilient, uh, more secure, but above all, deliver faster, delivered faster to the end user. So the entire goal of the cloud is to deliver application faster. And the way to do this when we talk about application security, when we talk about applications, is to do this in a CI CD pipeline. So what is a CI CD pipeline? Um, what happened, what used to happen in the past? I mean, how did we develop software? Well, we used, we used to have a waterfall uh, type of development where everything was falling, you know, every step was in its place. And we were used to plan for a long time because waterfall development were taking a long time, like between year and a two. So we had time to plan and we had time to, um, to put our security controls, and you know, in, I know I knew that in two we are, in two months I needed somebody to do a code review, so I was able to pull out a tender and schedule the time, and everything was really slow and nice. And then we migrate to the cloud, and the business, the actual business inside the organization, started demanding that we produce software faster. And the tr traditional way of working did not cut it; did not provide the right results. Waterfall development change into agile development where the development is faster and there are uh, and there are sprints that in that it basically means that from the design of the um, of the concept to the production there should be a couple of weeks and not a couple of months and this put a lot of pressure on security and I will get back to that in a couple of minutes but um, how uh, even if we don't put security into this equation how do we develop software faster in the traditional way every time the developer was developing a feature we used to collect all the features together and then we pull out a version and this took a long time what is the ICD uh, pipeline in short we want to make sure that once the developer finished the function, he has a, he a, a completed his own feature, he, this code is automatically integrates into the main code, into the main branch of the code and creates a version. This is continuous integration where the code, once the developer is finished, the code is integrated into the uh, existing code and create a new build or a new version or a new distribution, doesn't really matter how you call it. Mm -hmm. And then this code is being de deployed first to the test environment and later to the production environment. And this all should be automatic. And the metaphor we're using is pipeline, just like the factory pipelines, where code is coming in from one end and you have a product, uh, a production environment in the other end, and the entire way between the left side where the developer is developing to the right side, where the production code uh, existing, where the code exists in production should be automatic as possible. So this is my definition for CI CD pipelines. And the big question is, how do you produce this pipeline to work securely? Right. 
Um, so um, continuing is basically throughout the pipeline, we need to have different security gates. And this is the, exactly the way that we implement our security controls throughout this pipeline. I mean, we let the developers basically do their own stuff. We continue let them produce new features and then deliver them into production. We just making sure that they pass through our security grades. And, and this is our basically our verification process. And you, can do this at, and you can do this as quickly as they're developing it because, you know, we talked about, uh, n- you know, now we have a much shorter window on this development time. So there's no, uh, this is happening uh, in real time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the idea is to make it in real time as short as possible. This is why you also have to plan your security great- gates to make sure that the tests are efficient and doesn't take too long. It does, uh, I mean, it's a big problem if the developer will take, it will take him two or three days to, uh, to develop the feature and ship it to test environment, and then it will take you another two or three days to do the testing. This is all should be really quick, I mean, in a matter of hours. Though so you need to deploy your security gates accordingly. And I will give a couple of examples about security gates and which, uh, which security gates we help organization to implement. And this will, would give the audience probably a good idea of um, what they should implement in the environment. So, sure. for instance, so, for instance, we have a developer that is working on his desktop uh, and starting to produce a new application or a new feature or a new branch inside an existing application. It doesn't really matter. On many occasions, the developer begins by downloading open source packages that can help him produce faster software. I think Gartner estimates that 70% of um, uh, software that is developed inside the organization, 70% comes from an open source. So the first security gate is to verify that this open source uh, software packages that developer is using are not vulnerable, that they are coming from a, a, a developer that we trust, that has get r- good reputation, that is being uh, responsive to uh, change requests and security bugs. So this is our secu- first step. And it usually happens even before the developer start developing, only choosing his uh, baseline packages. So this is an example of the first security gate. Later on, the developer starts developing his software. He uh, now finish up a specific function. He has a code that is working. This is where we implement our second security gate. This is called static analysis or static application security testing. In short, it's called SAST. In static uh, analysis, we don't run the code. We don't operate the code. We read the code. This is the automated alternative for code review that we had a couple of years ago before uh, automation kicked in. So autom- uh, static analysis tool will read the code and will verify that the developer didn't do mistakes like, for instance, using an input fields that don't have um, uh, they don't have input validation or did or use unupdated uh, not updated libraries right, and sometimes right. with uh, with good uh, SAS tools this is happening as the developer types its command I mean some of those tools integrated into the developers uh, environment to the IDE environment and then they tell you it, once you finish a function they can give him the ranking of this function. And again, um, I didn't mention it, but maybe it's a good time to mention it now. Our goal here is to find the vulnerabilities and mistakes as close to the uh, developer's desktop as much as possible. This is the shift left approach. Why shift left? Because we want to find the defects as soon as possible because changing the uh, fixing defects or fixing vulnerabilities when the code is in production, when the code is live, it costs so much more. So that's the idea, making sure that the developers uh, will have the first hint of what they're doing is secure or not. Um, so that's like the second um, uh, security gate. Let's mention a couple of others more. The next thing that in the CI CD pipeline is deploying the test environment. I mean, the developer finished uh, the build. We have now a version that we want to deploy. The next phase would be deploying the uh, test environment. 
today organization, they don't have one testing uh, environment. Basically, they create test environment for every version they want to check on every service that they want to check. Often they do this automatically, and this is called infrastructure as code. So when the test environment is being deployed, we want to check how secure this environment is. uh, Does the environment don't have any open ports from the internet? Are the web, are the database servers don't have any public IP addresses? Are there are no open buckets? There are no application secrets that are stored inside the code. All of this are also a security gate. We're examining the templates of the infrastructure's code. We are checking the application secrets and verifying that, uh, basically, we're verifying that the deployment that we're going to do is secured even before we're deploying it. It's a big change of uh, thinking. You know, in, in the past, we used to wait until the entire uh, uh, right. environment is being deployed, right. and then we started testing if it's okay. Today, we can do this in the level of a template, and this is one of the innovation that Infrastructure as a Code brought to us. So and- it sounds like uh, from, from following all this process, uh, you know, you're reducing the time, right? It takes to deploy through the automation of the whole process. You're gonna mm-hmm. prob- you're gonna detect uh, errors earlier in the process, right? In the development process, so that's gonna make a big difference. And uh, you're gonna be able to um, have uh, instantaneous feedback to what's kind of what's what's going on while it's being de- developed. What is, mm-hmm. is there any other any other benefits besides the, the ones I kind of just rattled off? Yeah, uh, first of all, the feedback loop is important, and it's nice of you to uh, mention it. I didn't mention it, but it's very important to provide the feedback as soon as possible. And next thing, if you build your environments automatically with no manual interference, you are narrowing down your possibilities for mistake. I think Gartner said that uh, 80% of cloud incidents are due to misconfiguration. Basically, the customer that is misconfiguring his own environment and then causing a security incident. So when we are deploying those uh, environments automatically using infrastructure as a code and we are checking them before we are deploying them even, we are narrowing down the possibility of creating those misconfiguration, and this is all due to automation. Right. Well, uh, we're, we're going to be closing up uh, in just a few minutes. We just have a couple minutes mm-hmm. left. But uh, look, uh, uh, Life Ours, who sponsors the Hackbits podcast, is is a proud partner, uh, you know, alliance partner with, with Cybrella. And, we, you know, our companies uh, work together. So if someone wanted to find out more or wanted more information uh, regarding the services, uh, what where should they visit and, and who should they contact? Well, um, uh, first of all, we always go to Sabrella website. We can uh, later on put on the episode link, maybe the link there. And uh, you can always uh, contact me on LinkedIn. I'm available there, Moshe Ferber. And of course, Sabrella website has uh, 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 all the inf- uh, contact information that you need in order to get in contact with us. Moshe, I wish we had like a ton of time because it's such an interesting topic. It, uh, it is something that um, maybe we'll have you back on again if you'd like. And we can dive a little deeper uh, into the subject. But I appreciate you taking the time to join me today.